race, crime, and COVID. The fake news media is usually guilty of one of two sins, sins of commission or sins of omission. Liberal journalists show their bias directly by distorting facts or indirectly by withholding facts. There's no better illustration of these sins than when it comes to false narratives about crime. Cops are systematically racist, we're told over and over and over again. Hate crimes are disproportionately affecting black victims. And white criminal suspects are to blame. That's what the national news headlines proclaim over and over and over again. And white supremacy, quote unquote, is the biggest threat in America, according to CNN. But the FBI simply do not support those claims. Federal Bureau of Justice statistics data shows that of nearly 600,000 violent interracial victimizations involving blacks and whites, black suspects committed, get this, 537,204 interracial felonies, and that's excluding homicides, or in other words, 90% of them, and whites committed 56,394 of them, or less than 10%. The Red Elephants blog points out that black perpetrators are also overrepresented among all perpetrators of hate crimes by 50%. That's according to the most recent Justice Department data from 2017. Whites, meanwhile, are underrepresented by 24%. Now, you never hear these facts from the national propagandists in the so-called mainstream media. It's a sin of omission that amounts to journalistic malpractice. And it's why you probably haven't heard much about a recent outbreak of violent crimes against Asian victims in major American cities committed by black perpetrators. Last Thursday, an 84-year-old Thai American was murdered in San Francisco. On Wednesday, a 64-year-old Vietnamese grandmother was assaulted in San Jose. And on the same day, a Filipino American was slashed across the face on a subway in Manhattan. The mainstream media does not spotlight our stories enough. We matter, and racism is killing us. I'm asking everyone who sees this to share and tag CNN, MSNBC, journalists with massive platforms like Rachel Maddow, Anderson Cooper, to cover our stories, cover this man's story. Our community is being attacked and we are dying to be heard. Two weeks ago, this 91-year-old Asian man in Chinatown was assaulted by a black assailant amidst a crime wave in the Bay Area of more than 20 robberies and violent attacks in that neighborhood. Meanwhile, San Francisco news outlets broadcast video of this brutal assault on an 84-year-old Asian man who died after being beaten by black suspects. That crime received no attention until liberal Asian celebrities and liberal journalists trying to blame the crime wave on, guess who, Donald Trump and, quote, anti-Asian hatred because of COVID and Wuhan. This country has seen a massive spike in anti-Asian attacks, especially since the start of the coronavirus. People have such cruel intentions, and it pains me to see hatred cause such a divide in a time where now, more than ever, we desperately need to come together. We need to do more as Asian Americans to voice our concerns and speak up, and we also cannot allow ourselves to be silenced. Advocates say these attacks became more prevalent after former President Trump began routinely using racist language to describe the pandemic. The China virus. Oh, I like the plague from China. A U.N. report found there were more than 1,800 racist incidents against Asian Americans from March to May of last year. This is all rotten baloney. The leftist Trump derangement syndrome sufferers have zero evidence that the thugs robbing and punching and murdering vulnerable elderly Asians have ever cared one iota about politics or COVID or race or Donald Trump. They have zero evidence that these street attacks were inspired by, quote unquote, anti-Asian hate, as opposed to pure opportunism and criminal malice. But the Biden White House, which, of course, has wasted no time adopting chai propaganda and kowtowing to woke politics, is promoting a virtue signaling executive order against xenophobia to address the crime wave. And liberal media outlets like CBS News are plying this fake news agenda to serve their own social justice anti-Trump principles. Our plan starts with mounting an I'm not aware that he's seen the videos, but he is concerned about the discrimination against the actions against the Asian American community, which is why he signed the executive order and why he's been outspoken and making clear that, um, you know, 
attacks, verbal attacks, any attacks of any form are unacceptable and we need to work together uh, to address them. So what aren't they talking about? It's another giant media sin of omission. These black on Asian crimes in Northern California and other liberal cities are spiking as radical George Soros backed district attorneys enact soft on crime policies such as restorative justice that let violent criminals run free. Chesa Boudin, the San Francisco Soros supported DA, dropped robbery, elder abuse, and hate crime charges last year against this 20 year old black suspect caught on tape attacking this elderly man of Asian descent. <laughs> Burglaries, arson, and motor vehicle thefts have all spiked as Boudin has abandoned prosecution of so-called quality of life crimes, as well as prosecutions for felony arrests. When you defund and demonize the police, all innocent citizens are unsafe, whatever their color. Blaming Donald Trump and racism isn't journalism, and it isn't progressivism. It's straight-up propaganda and deadly criminal demagoguery.